My name is Chris Snedden. I'm uh, here from London, Ontario, Canada. And uh, today I'd like to show you a little bit of my take on creating images to put on pots and using them. I hope you enjoy it. So obviously I need something to work on to show you that. So I'm just going to throw a plate real quick. Oh. I think it's important to realize that when you're using images on things, they carry meaning. You, know, you might have a meaning to the images that you use, but it could mean something completely different to somebody else. So there's a bit of a responsibility there, I think. I don't know. Certainly don't want to offend anyone. Pad of clay. I'll stick my bat down to it. I came to this um, <clears throat> use of imagery on my things. Of course, people have been doing this for millennia, right? But it came to me, uh, I mean, I did production pottery for years and worked with drippy glazes and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, at the, in the beginning, I was sort of feeling my way down a dark hallway, you know, not really knowing what I was doing. Um, you know, my little harp thing. There it is. These are fun little toys. Take off the edge there, the uneven bit. Put a little water on there. Now at this point, I like to start slip decorating right away. So the slips that I use are colored with stains. Um, <clears throat> I use the Robin Hopper slip base, which is 75% ball clay, OM4 uh, is what I use, 10% um, EPK, and 10% um, silica, and 5% soda feldspar. So that's the base, and to that I add probably about 20% um, stain to get the nice rich color that I want. So. This is a workshop that I've done. This sense of narrative image transfer really is what it's all about. Um, creating your own decals and using them to decorate your pots. I've been tending more and more lately to um, toward creating little paintings on my pots, but you don't have to do that. You could easily use this for creating pattern or something. I've done a lot of a lot of work commission work doing this. Liturgical pieces as well as you know, corporate gifts that sort of thing. 
Commissions are stressful though. So several good layers. I'm gonna try and blend them in together here around the rim. Sometimes a little dab of water helps with that. Just create a couple of lines on the rim there, frame everything in, hold it all in, and then I'm going to distort the rim a little bit, create some interesting points. Just to keep it interesting. So now I have a canvas to work on. Uh, I've got my plate here. It's dried out a little bit, um, but I haven't trimmed it yet. And the reason for that is that um, <clears throat> I've found that when I build up the surface on the inside, um, it tends to warp the plate or it will crack or something like that. So I do all of my trimming after I've done the decorating on the inside. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna get some things together to put on this because I've got an idea in my head what I want <clears throat> and I've got uh, some little black cats well one's going to be black and one's going to be a tortoise shell and I'll, uh, I'll explain how that that works <clears throat> so I just I found some clip art on the internet uh, print, you know, put it together in Photoshop, and then <clears throat> I just cut it out on a piece of foam core, or was it core plast, right, with an X-Acto blade. Um, I'll show you these, though. These are some crows, because I do a lot of work with crows. I'm switching to cats now, but these crows are... You know, very much, you know, cut out with um, a cricket machine or cry cut machine. I'm not even sure how it's pronounced, but. And I'm going to do the same technique that I do with those to put these cats on the plate. So I've got those. This is where it's all going to come together. So, need to decide which way is up. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say that. That way's up. <laughs> I'm going to take my black slip. And the first thing I want to do is compose this a little bit. So, this is going to be the black cat. Like my little boy Bodie. He's gonna be sitting right about there. So I'm you gonna know, just mark it very lightly with a pencil, giving lots of room around where the bodler is. So there we go. And I'm gonna take a brush. Brush on my black slip. And again, I'm going to have to use two or three coats because I don't want, want a black cat with a bunch of brush strokes in it. Would never do. So. I mean, I could wait, but then I wouldn't be able to use the fun torch thing, right? And if I just keep brushing it, <clears throat> it's going to just push the slip around. 
on the surface of the plate. And I, I'll end up with a blotchy cat, which no household needs. So, now, before I put this cat on, and I'm doing it first because I want this cat to appear to be in the foreground of the painting that I'm doing on this um, plate. So I'm going to get this wet first. And then I'm going to put it on the slip. That way it doesn't shrink and do crazy things. And the edges stay firmly put put down. And I can kind of slide it around a little bit and, uh, you know, position it. So then I'm going to take a sponge, a soft sponge. Let's, let's get a poultry sponge and just pull that slip away. the paper cat. So now we have the black slip covered by the paper cat. very gentle when you're doing this otherwise you'll do something foolish like pull the cat's tail off or the bird's feathers off or something like that and it happens so she's gonna go there so I'm gonna take because tortoise shells are splotchy, I'm going to take and put on some splotches. Not being too terribly careful about the placement, I don't think I could do a, a likeness of a cat, but one could always try. I'll take some dark brown. some of that on. If anybody has a look at my Facebook or Instagram page, they'll see my cat, Jillian. She's pretty sweet. Definitely a daddy's girl. This is a yellow slip. One of my all-time favorite colors. It's a nice yellow. Um, rutile. It's like 15 to 20% rutile in it. It seems like a lot. And, you know, I could probably tone it down, especially with the stains. But, you know, I just I spend so much time on these things. I just want them to work out, you know, I, I mean, if I want blue, then I'm going to get blue. I don't, don't want to mess around with it, you know. I, I don't want to spend all my time doing tests, you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I really admire people who really enjoy the whole chemistry part of it, but I just like making pots. So... There we go, some orange. That'll be good. And again, same deal. I'm gonna take this cat, I'm gonna dip it in water. Get the, let the water run off, and then 
lay it down on the plate. So this is a wall plate, right? I mean, I, I'm going to put a durable clear glaze over it and, and all of that. And I suppose if somebody wanted to, they could pull it off the wall and make nachos on it and throw it through the dishwasher and then hang it back up on their wall, you know? And I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't be angry about that at all. In fact, I'd really hope they'd invite me over for the nachos, you know? <laughs> so again, I'm gonna carefully pull this away. Okay, so we got a calico cat. We have a cat there. And <clears throat> what is that cat doing? Well, I've got a fish here. I'll set this aside for a minute because I want to show you something. So there's my fish and I've just I printed it out on a piece of paper and I cut it out all the way around. I'm going to take some white slip and I'm putting all of these things on the plate before I paint the background because once I flip them over the paper will be protecting the image. So there I've got some white slip. I'm going to take that white slip and I'm going to brush it right over top of the fish. So I'm just letting it harden up a little bit until it loses its shine. And I'm going to put a second coat on. In the meantime, I'm going to look for my fettling knife. Brush that on again. So there's a nice thick coat. And so that the sticker is nice and wet. Okay, pro tip. Wet the knife first. I'm going to slide that, if I can, I can see it from this end, right underneath the fish. So I'm going to get rid of that, get my painting back, and I'm going to take this fish and put it right there and slide it on. And I'm just going to gently tap it down. And then once it hardens up a little bit, I'm going to just rub the back of it to get rid of any air bubbles that could be underneath there. Now, Here's the big one. <clears throat> Set this aside for a minute. I was talking to you about monoprinting. So I cut out this drawing that I did of a window. All right. And this slip trailer you know how these things get clogged up all the time? This is a trick I picked up in Thunder Bay, or a tool for cleaning out those, those nibs. This is actually a set of um, little files that they use to clean out gas or orifices. Orifices? There's the word. And so the finest one actually fits the thing and we'll clean it out and they're actually little files so they, they, they work like a charm anyway so whenever you're using a slip trailer of course you want to you know sort of go like this and push all the slip down and the air bubbles up so that it doesn't go blop
you saw me take the fish and I can easily slide my fettling knife underneath the fish, but I can't really do that with this. So I figured out a way of doing this using another piece of paper and some more slip. So I'm gonna take that white slip and I'm gonna brush it on there. And I'm probably not the first person to figure this one out, but you know, whenever I encounter a sticker that's got all sorts of sticky eddy bits, I use this method and it seems to work a treat. So there is that. And then more slip on top of that. plate and I'm going to place that because now it's stuck down on there. I'm going to place that over my cat. Who is looking out the window. And you may be thinking, oh my God, Chris, what are you doing? You're messing up your cat and your fish. Well, actually, they're protected by the paper, so I'm not messing anything up. Because everything that I put over top of them is going to appear to be behind them. Once this is, once I lift all the paper off. I can probably find a bigger sponge to do this with. What is that cat sitting on? That cat is probably sitting on a couch or a chair or maybe one of those cat tree perches or I don't know what. Or maybe a special shelf that was put up just for the cat to look out the window. Maybe. See if we can figure it out. 
So I figured it out. It's a love seat. So now I get to cut it out. So there's my print, and my drawing of a love seat. Crude as it is, and I think I'm gonna make it Bermuda green. Fairly thick. I'm just going to lay it on. Just like that. Done. And this one I can pick up with a knife. Just like that. Get rid of this. Get my plate back. Now, I'm going to put it on in such a way so the cat sort of looks like he's sitting on it. Kind of a huge cat for that size of that love seat, but I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> it's enormous black house panther. So that will appear to be behind the torty girl as well. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the sky on the outside of the window. There it is there. Zervan Blue, one of my faves. Right over top of that. You know what? I'm going to grab some. Mystery blue and all the purists out there. Yes, I just did that. Next, in that sky, we're going to paint some fluffy white clouds. So I'm going to take some slip that's got some titanium in it, and I'm going to just put some circles on there. Take my fan brush and just shoop, 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 like that. Yep, the sound effects help. There we go. I'm going to paint that room. With that 
yellow again. So. So this is the background. These are the walls. I often think a lot of potting is just learn learning how to fix stuff that you messed up. Of course you try not to mess it up in the first place, but so now I need a straight edged piece of paper. mask so I'm gonna wipe this yellow away and that is going to be the division between the floor and the wall hmm. how about orange brush. Very sophisticated tool made from a whisk broom and a rubber band. And just really imitate that shag carpeting. And then once this is bisque fired, I'll take it and rub some underglaze into the grooves here. And that really gives it a lot of depth. Okay, I think that's that for that. So now when I peel this off and this off, I've got a division. So using that daubing technique, I'm going to look for that orange peel right there. Then I'm going to grab one of these fancy schmancy block cube type rubber stamps and of course you can always just stamp directly onto the piece so but we don't make mistakes we make design modifications. So we'll put some wallpaper and some over here. There, good enough. Because now what I'm going to do, get rid of that. I'm going to take some paper and I'm going to line it up because this is now reasonably dry. Take some paper and I'm going to line it up on this line here, the division between the wall and the floor. And another piece here. Should wet this. all about the water management. Take my old fan brush and 
and get my black slip. Get some on there. And then create a bit of a shadow. some dry brushing into this corner. You're going to have just the lightest bit to do any kind of dry brushing. But I just want to kind of fade that in. slip trailer and I'm gonna just define this here's another pro trip pro tip about the slip trailers if you take a sponge and lay it next to it like this and squeeze out all the slip it keeps your slip trailer pretty free and clear in the dark corners of the house where the cats play there it is ready for using again so now, when I peel this up, and again, with this texture down here, I'm going to rub in some underglaze once it's fired, and that should really help. Mmm, one detail. Forgot to mention, got a piece of paper. And a hole punch. I'm going to take it. Give myself a little circle of clay or of paper. I need to find out where that cat's paw is. There it is. And I have some very special slip here. I'm just gonna set that down right there. That's where it is. I have some chili pepper red slip. Now this stuff, boom, very expensive. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I suppose you could use underglaze but I just find that underglaze doesn't stick well enough so I bit the bullet and several years ago I made up some chili pepper red stain this or chili pepper red slip this slip has a hundred percent stain to a hundred percent Robin Hopper slip base so if I have a kilogram of Robin Hopper slip base I'm using a kilogram of chili pepper red stain. I'm going to use a little bit, occasion, you know, occasionally. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it right where the cat is playing. And stick that down. Perfect. Okay, so it is time to start removing some of this paper that's stuck down on this plate. So first thing I'm going to do is working backwards. Now I may not 
be able to get every little bit up. But that's okay. The, uh, the kiln will take care of it. And you might ask, well, why not just let the kiln take care of it? Why not just let the kiln fire off the paper because of that? Some of the slip has lifted up on the paper. There was like either an air bubble underneath that or something, right? So what I've got to do is find my burnishing tool. This really nice one from China. Whoa, there it is. I'm gonna take a little bit of water, drop it on there, fold it back over, and rub it. Stick it back down. It's always so nice when it just comes right off, but sometimes it just doesn't. So while that's hardening up, I'm gonna pick it another corner. The other reason I like to pull the paper off is because I want to be able to see it and make adjustments to the design or the piece if I want to. Or I may want to add pieces on top of what's already down there. And you need to do this when it's weather hard. You can't just you can't wait until it's bone dry. Because you'll never get it off. And you will have to rely on the kiln, which is always well, it's not reliable. Now the only places that I really have to get it all off is in where, where I would like to do more work. For example, I might want to uh, do some shading in, on this love seat. Yeah, that healed over pretty well. It's good. It's actually going up fairly well. But you can imagine, I end up with little bits of paper everywhere sometimes. And of course, when you're doing this, you need to be careful not to um, make the slip underneath. And you can always you know, go in and touch it up if needs be.
now I've got these prints of friends. So I'm just gonna get them a trim. And these are prints made from a red rubber stamp. as it stands now. So I'll take that and I'll rehydrate it by dipping it in water. And this is a tricky bit. You will let the water run off so you can see how it's kind of re-wetted the slip. Of course, the plate will absorb some of that water. So I rub that, and it goes kind of transparent. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to wait a little bit. Fine, Mike. I want another one. A special one up here. That I... That's it. That's it. Number two, if you're doing this, is that everything comes out clearer after it's fired. You know, the colors are clearer. Everything is clearer. The images are clearer.
dreaming of fish. Staring out the window, dreaming of fish. Probably not the healthiest practice, but there you go. And now I need that green again. So now I get to clean up. Thank you everyone for watching my little presentation. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope there was some little nugget for you to use.